on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites at areasports.net and at wbyn.org. Well, we've been talking to you about it throughout the morning, kind of teasing you a little bit about the fact that we're going to talk to a sports writer from the hometown of Cardinal Outstanding Outfielder, Jeremy Hazelbaker. A lot of people wondering, man, what is the story on this Jeremy Hazelbaker? Well, he's from Muncie, Indiana. That's where he was born and grew up. And, of course, he went to Ball State University before he got into the minor leagues. And we're going to visit with Ryan O'Gara right now. Ryan is a sports writer for the Muncie Star Press, and he joins us on the phone right now. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm here, Randy. Thanks for having me. I know all of us who are Cardinal fans here in the St. Louis area and, and Southern Illinois area are excited with what's been going on, and I assume that the folks in Muncie, Indiana, are pretty excited about Jeremy Hazelbaker, too, huh? Randy, you have no idea. Every night is uh, is just a, a love fest on Twitter. Everybody is, is checking box scores, going crazy. I mean, he is definitely the talk of the town, and deservedly so. He's gotten off to a fantastic start with the Cardinals. He's worked extremely hard for this opportunity, so... A lot of people are just happy to see him kind of rewarded for all the work he's put in over the years. I mean, a lot of time in the minor leagues. Well, it is a feel-good story. It really is because he's 28 years old, almost 29, and to just now make it to the major leagues, you know, usually by that age, if you haven't made it, you're not going to make it, right? That, that's exactly right, and, and we talked about that uh, when he did get that call um, up to the big leagues. You know, he mentioned that, that you know, he's, he's always looked at it as a, as a privilege to be in this spot, to put on a uniform every day. And uh, he said he was just going to keep playing until uh, until someone told him he can't. So, um, yeah, he he knows that uh, the clock was ticking, and it's extremely unlikely. It gets more unlikely every year. For, for a guy like him to, to reach this point, but uh, he's uh, sure glad he stuck with it. Well, yeah, we all are too, that's for sure. You know, he played in the Red Sox organization for a while, then he was in the Dodgers organization for a while and really never advanced anything beyond AA, and he gets released by the Dodgers. He goes home to Indiana and and waiting by the phone, and nobody's calling, I guess, and then all of a sudden, you know, the Cardinals do finally call and, and offer him a minor league contract and a chance to go to spring training, and he just certainly has made the most of it. But he was all ready to do something else, uh, find a real job or go back to school or something, wasn't he? Yeah, that's that's the only time he's ever thought about quitting baseball um, in his entire life was uh, that 10-day stretch about uh, last uh, July, I believe it was, uh, when he was released by the Dodgers. And, you know, in all honesty, that, that was probably the best thing that could have happened to him. He wasn't going anywhere in that organization. He was blocked by several other prospects. He just wasn't getting the opportunity that he felt he, he deserved it. And he needed a fresh start. And sometimes that's the case with, with a lot of athletes. Um, you know, he was in the Red Sox organization. You mentioned that. And there was some optimism. He did reach AAA with the Red Sox. And there was some optimism that he might have made the big leagues with the Red Sox had Terry Francona... Theo Epstein, I mean, if you remember a few years back when uh, the chicken and beer in the clubhouse and that all came about and that regime kind of shifted out of Boston, and that really hurt him because that regime really liked him a lot. I mean, he was in big league spring training games, and so he very well could have broken through with the Red Sox years ago, but uh, things just didn't work out. He ends up with the Dodgers. That doesn't work out, and sure enough, now he's here with the Cardinals and getting an opportunity. Well, I didn't realize that he had actually reached AAA with the Red Sox. That That is an amazing story, how close he came and then back down he went. Huh. Wow. That is interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well, the thing that's been been really unique about him is the fact of his speed, you know. Uh, I mean, the guy is really, really fast. And, of course, we've already seen him you know, beat out some infield hits while with the Cardinals. But as you look at his stats through the minor leagues, I mean, he stole a lot of bases, something like 236 uh, career stolen bases in the minor leagues. And so the guy's got speed. He's got wheels. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's why he fits in so well in the outfield, too. I mean, he, he gets great jumps on the ball. Um, he's really been able to utilize, utilize that. And I think that's probably his most underrated quality, to be honest. It was something that I didn't even realize it particularly. I mean, he's always been a fast guy, but you never know how well that translates. But uh, he definitely fits in well at the top of the order. Um, at the time being, he's he's putting the ball in play, which has been a little bit of an issue in the past for him in the minor leagues. Uh, people were pretty concerned about his strikeout rates. Um, but if he puts the ball in play, like you said, he can show off that athleticism and uh, really, really make some things happen for the Cardinals on the base pass. 
Well, and because of his speed, and because of his range, and he's got a decent arm, he's already played all three of the outfield positions. So actually, that gives manager Mike Matheny some some luxury and some options to be able to move him around, and, and that's exactly what he's done here through the first ten games. Yeah, he, he spoke about just his versatility as an outfielder and how he thought that would be a positive for him moving forward. Um, you know, he didn't want to speculate on on other members of the Cardinals, but but obviously. Matt Holliday is in, at the end of his career. Matt Adams is a little bit more limited uh, defensively as to what he can do. So there, there was an opportunity there for him, just being able to play all three outfield positions, um, being left-handed. Uh, so, you know, there was an opportunity for him if he took advantage of it early on in the season, and he certainly has. Yeah, well, I spent some time down in Jupiter, Florida this spring working alongside Tom Ackerman of KMOX Radio and had a chance to see Jeremy Hazelbaker play up close and personal. And at the time that I was down there, you know, he was leading the team in many offensive statistics at that time. And you just had a chance, you had a feeling that he, if, if, if given the chance, that he could do some special things. But still, it was not any certainty that he was going to make the team. And he really didn't make the team until we saw the injury to Tommy Pham, which kind of opened the door for him to be the last one on the roster, opening the season at Pittsburgh. Isn't it funny just how the way things work out? I mean, you know, just a month ago, you know, he was probably on very few fans' radar. I mean, he was having a nice spring, but uh, just as a realistic option to really contribute this year, I mean, he probably probably wasn't on on fans' radars, and uh, and now he's just a staple at the top of the order, and, and uh, it, it's just crazy how how things can certainly change and opportunities present themselves, and uh, I know that's just talking with him after he made the team and before opening day, that's all he wanted was was just a chance to show what he could do. And, you know, he was very modest about it all, but he was also very confident in himself and ready for this. I mean, he's waited seven years for it. That's a lot of bus rides in the minor leagues through small towns. and He, he was ready for it, so... He's, he's just taking advantage of it. Yeah, he really is. Well, he's not only leading the league, the National League, in hitting, he's also leading the Cardinals in, in home runs and in stolen bases and, and doing a pretty admirable job out in the, uh, in the outfield as well. And so there's a lot of pluses to him. And I love the fact that he's beaten out a couple of infield hits already because that speed has really come into play. And, and I think that's just another asset, another reason why you kind of got to keep him in the lineup. It's going to be hard to get him out of the lineup, isn't it? I would guess so. You know, I can't really speculate as to what Mike Pizzini might do, but uh, at this point, I feel like there would always be an uproar from the fans if, if he wasn't playing, you know, five days a week. Um, I, I feel like a lot of fans have, have really taken to him. I mean, you could probably speak to that better than I can. Um, people around here are maybe a little bit biased towards him. You know, they, they certainly have a vested interest in him and um, with him growing up here, but uh, it does seem like he's become sort of a fan favorite there. Well, I would encourage people who are listening right now, if they want to learn more about uh, the background and, and kind of follow Jeremy Hazelbaker, they certainly can go to the website of, of your newspaper, the, the Star Press there in Muncie, Indiana, because you've written several stories about him already. Talk about what kind of a player that he was coming out of Ball State University. Was, was he a standout player at Ball State? You know, that's an interesting question, Randy. Um, his first two seasons at Ball State, uh, he hit about 240, if you can believe that. Um, Wow. He was very frustrated after his sophomore season. He he was playing. Uh, he played third base in high school. He played, He was an infielder. He never played outfield, and he switches to second base in college at Ball State. And he was a starting second baseman. His sophomore year, he lost his starting job, and uh, it was not looking good for him. And so he just approached uh, approached his head coach and said, "Coach, what do I have to do to get in the lineup?" And uh, they had a, a senior outfielder graduating, so he went to a summer wood bat league in Ohio and uh, just learn the outfield. It was his first time ever playing it. He had never played it before, but uh, obviously, as you've seen, a very athletic player. Um, comes back for his junior season, uh, plays center field, wins the job, and uh, he becomes a second-team All-American. I mean, it's kind of remarkable. Just He had said that he wasn't close to quitting after his sophomore year, but he was as frustrated as he's been. I mean, it was, uh, as you can imagine, I mean, he, he hit two forty four as a sophomore. Um only started 31 games, which is about half the games. Um, and then his junior season, he comes back, and he's third-team All-America from Baseball America. He's second-team from uh, All-Ping Baseball. Um, I mean, just he gets uh, drafted in the fourth round by the Red Sox. Um, and that's, that's pretty remarkable in itself. Um, you know, he hit 429, set several single-season school records. So 
he just basically turned his career around by moving to the outfield. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it really is. And you've got a photo that uh, I saw on your, your website there for the Star Press, which I thought was really, really neat. I don't know who gets the photo credit for this, but it's a photo of Jeremy Hazel Baker hugging his parents at PNC Park in Pittsburgh there at that first game to, to open the season. And here it was. He finally made it to the big leagues. He's on the field. He's warming up. He's taking batting practice. And he comes over and he hugs mom and dad. That was extra special. Yeah, yeah, that photo is actually courtesy of his high school coach, uh, Brian Dudley. And, that, and that's another element of this story. Uh, it's just that people around here really just, they love this guy. Um, his high school coach and a lot of other people from Selma drove, you know, about five or six hours to Pittsburgh for opening day. You know, basically they had a day's notice. Everybody bought tickets. So, I mean, he just has a following. Um uh, and it, that moment was really cool to see him hugging his parents. You know, they spent a lot of time going to games. Uh, I spoke to his dad uh, a few weeks ago, and he had gone down to spring training. Uh, his dad's name is Phil um, and his wife, Becky. And they had gone to spring training for five or six days near the start of it. And Jeremy had some sort of back issue. So he wasn't even playing when they were there. And they still, still stayed there the whole time with him. So, you know, they've certainly put in the time. And just to see that moment um, – for them, I'm sure it, it was pretty remarkable just uh, to, to see your son finally make the major leagues after all these years. Uh, it, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, you know, and down at spring training, of course, he was wearing number 91 on the jersey, and now he's wearing number 41 in the big leagues. And <laughs> you know you've arrived when you move from 91 to 41, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that, that was well. He looked like a little bit more like he belonged at that point. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, you really did. Well, what also makes this an interesting story, I think, Ryan, is the fact that uh, you're a native of, of Chicago, and so you've grown up and been a Chicago Cubs fan. So here you are <laughs> covering a local hero now uh, from uh, Muncie, Indiana, his hometown, Jeremy Hazelbaker, who's who's tearing it up with the Cardinals and leading the league in hitting, but yet you're a Cubs fan. So uh, you're able to put those interests aside and cover Jeremy and do it in a great way. So a tip of the cap to you. <laughs> You know what, Randy? I've never cared about the Cardinals so much. <laughs> you know, I find myself looking at box scores. I listen to some of their radio broadcasts now. And you know what was even cool was I was listening to uh, the Cubs broadcast. It was, I can't remember which game it was a few nights ago. And all of a sudden, they just started talking about Jeremy. Uh, they were talking about the Cardinals, and uh, they were just they started talking about Jeremy. And for about a minute there, they were trying to figure out who he was. And I'm just sitting there smiling, you know, just – I think because I think everybody's trying to figure out who is this guy that's just kind of come out of nowhere <laughs> and is leading the National League in hitting, and so uh, it, it's cool. And so I hope this story continues, and uh, because he's a he's a tremendous man, and uh, you know everybody's here is it, just rooting for him because uh, you know he treats people the right way, and uh, I, I think that's what endears him to a lot of people. Yeah. Well, on another note, you, you mean you got to be pretty optimistic about your Cubs too. I mean, on paper, they're uh, arguably you know the, the best team on paper, and and look to be off to a great start here. And you got to be excited about the prospect of what the Cubs can do this year. Absolutely, Randy. And it's a little unnerving to see so many people pick them. To be honest, it makes me a little bit uneasy. Last year was kind of nice. You know, Cardinals get off to this great start last year. The Cubs just kind of slide right under the radar. All of a sudden, you look up and they've won 97 games, and it's pretty remarkable. And uh, this year, everybody, they're not sneaking up on anybody anymore. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. Uh, you know, the Cardinals, it doesn't matter who's who's healthy for them. They're always going to be in the picture. And the Pirates are, are a phenomenal team as well. So We'll have to see, but uh, I'm certainly pretty optimistic about the way things have started for the Cubs. Well, it's going to be a very fun race this year, and you're right. The Pirates are going to be right in the thick of things as well, and it's going to be a really fun on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when the Cubs and Cardinals go at it at Bush Stadium. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure I'm sure the Cardinals have been waiting for that one since, uh, since the postseason last year when uh, the Cubs beat them. But, uh, yeah, I haven't even looked at the pitching matches, but it'd be cool to see John Lackey throw back to St. Louis. Uh, I'm not sure what what kind of reception Jason Hayward is going to get. You could probably speak to that better than I could. I, you know, I think it'll be mixed. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that appreciate what he did last year and respect him, and I, you know, I think he'll get applause from a lot of people. There's going to be some people that are going to be, you know, a little bit bitter that he, you know, turned down the offer and chose to to go with the Cubs. But it'll be mix and mix. But they're good sports fans, good baseball fans, and 
in St. Louis, and so I, I think he'll get a lot of respect, and there'll be a lot of the Cardinal players that actually will be happy to see him again, and they'll be able to catch up on things together. And, uh, you know, he's probably going to have a good season this year for the Cubs. I know he's struggling right now, hitting only about 200, but, you know, he might be putting a little bit too much pressure on himself right now. I don't know. Oh, yeah, long season, plenty of time to turn that around. I don't think anybody is really worried about him, especially with how deep their lineup is. I don't think they're counting on him every game to, to have two or three hits. I mean, he can definitely find his way here. He's got that time. Um, if you don't mind me asking, I, I kind of like to turn the tables on you a little bit. What has it been like? What What is the buzz and excitement around Jeremy um, in the St. Louis area? Just so kind of give people around here an idea. Well, it has really been something. I mean, everybody's been saying, who is this Jeremy Hazelbaker? And, of course, I get asked that question a lot since I had a chance to see him down at spring training. And then there's other people who, who went down there and visited and, and saw him play too. So some people are surprised and some aren't. But, you know, it has been really fun to see the emergence of Hazel Baker as well as Aledmus Diaz. And those two, of course, um, you know, knew each other in the minor leagues. And, and their friends, and so to see both of them excel has been, uh, but has been extra special, but I think most people have been um, really overwhelmed by what Hazel Baker has done, given the fact that, you know, he toiled for so long in the minor leagues, and they understand the story about how, you know, he was released and went home, and he thought his career was over, and here, you know, the Cardinals have kind of helped resurrect that, and I think you've got to tip your cap to somebody in the Cardinal organization that's a scout. They've got great scouts out there. And there is somebody that saw him play in that Dodgers organization as a scout that finally, you know, let the upper brass know that, hey, we might want to call this guy and just give him a shot and invite him to spring training, and let's just see if he can do anything. And I think maybe part of the reason why they did that was because of his speed. I think his speed was a unique asset that they at least wanted to explore, and they did, and now the rest is history. So uh, tip of the cap to whoever the scout was that said, hey, we need to give this guy a chance. Absolutely. And it's tip of the cap to the entire organization because that that is really what has made Jeremy, I think, comfortable and able to thrive. He spoke extensively about that, and so does it, so did his dad. Just the contrast, and not to uh, talk bad about another organization, but he just said the atmosphere in the Cardinals organization is so much different than it was in the Dodgers organization. He has a tremendous amount of respect for, for everybody in that front office and just the way the organization his run, and that was a big thing. He had a lot of opportunities um, this this off season. Um, he had a, he had a great year at AAA last year after the Cardinals picked him up. He had an opportunity to sign with someone like Pittsburgh, and if he would have signed in Pitt with Pittsburgh, he could have played um, AAA ball in Indianapolis, which is very close to here. Um, so that was an attractive option. He could have he had uh, interest from the Reds, and Cincinnati isn't too far from here. But uh, at the end of the day, he he wanted to be with St. Louis just because of the way they treated him last year. He respected that. And he wanted to uh, to stick with him, and uh, I think he made the right decision. Oh uh, yeah, I think definitely so. Does what about other extended family members? Does he have any brothers or sisters there in, in Muncie, or any other family members? He, he has a sister, Danielle, and you know I wasn't around when she was um, in high school, but uh, from what I understand, she was a. Uh, a, a better athlete than he was, uh, even. I mean, she was a, a standout volleyball player. Volleyball is extremely popular in Muncie. Um, it is. It's something else, really. Um, until you're here, you it, until you kind of experience it. It's kind of hard to explain. But uh, she was a standout volleyball player, and so she, from what I've heard, overshadowed him even a little bit. Uh, very athletic. So. Uh, but that is his only sibling. Hmm. Well, what about other sports? Did he excel in other sports besides baseball when he was in high school there? You know, I don't believe so. Um, I wasn't here when he was in high school, though, so so I'm not positive. But uh, all the talk has just been about baseball for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure he could probably run for mayor right now if uh, if need be. Huh? He's got to be a popular guy there, and it's such a fun story and so neat to see what has happened with him and, and coming the, up the way that he has. And, and we hope that he can continue to, to be successful in the Cardinal uniform. But uh, it's been fun getting a little insight from you this morning, Ryan. And, and again, I love the work that you've been doing there at the Star Press, following him and, and writing the stories on him. And I, and I hope that you continue to do that. And we'll encourage our listeners, if they want to know more about Jeremy Hazelbaker and his background and where he's come from and, and a little bit, you can uh, hop on the website there of the Star Press in Muncie, Indiana, and, and follow the work of Ryan O'Gara. So uh, thanks for joining us this morning, buddy. It's been fun talking to you. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Randy. Okay, have a good weekend, too, all right? 
All right, thank you. Okay, take care. All right, bye-bye. That is Ryan O'Gara. He is sports writer for the Star Press in Muncie, Indiana, and he's been uh, doing a lot of coverage on Jeremy Hazel Baker. That's where Jeremy was born, where he grew up at. Of course, he went to Ball State University and uh, got some more insight this morning on Jeremy Hazel Baker and his background. And just enjoy Ryan spending some time with us this morning. And and what a unique twist to the story, the fact that Ryan himself is a Cub fan. <laughs> and here he is covering Jeremy Hazel Baker, who's tearing it up for the Cardinals. But Ryan doing a great job and kind of putting those allegiances to side and, and uh, taking an interest in what Jeremy's doing and his family and and so uh, a tip of the cap there to Ryan. He's doing a professional job there, uh, all kidding aside. And it's going to be a fun race this year with the Cubs and the Cardinals for sure, and the Pirates will be in the mix. And so uh, it's a long season. It's a marathon. It's a grind. We'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously, Jeremy Hazel Baker is probably not going to hit over 400 for the whole season. We know that it's going to cool down after a while, but it's so fun to see him off to such a great start leading the National League in hitting and also leading the Cardinals not only in average but also in home runs and in stolen bases uh, as we head into this uh, this weekend series. Hey, we're out of time. That's going to wrap up the Sports Couch this morning. We want to thank everyone so much for joining